<laughs> Good evening and welcome to Omnidog Live. Uh, I'm Omnidog from Omnidog's Vault, the professional YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Joined as always by my co-host, Gabe Loves 90s Comics. How's it going, Gabe Marino? I'm doing great, Jess, because I had a countdown and you still forgot to grab your mask. <laughs> I'm like, that's nice music. Oh, wait, that's countdown music. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm it. doing good though. It's a good day. It's Monday. Monday is like my favorite day of the week because of this show and the cool information we get to talk about today. This is a fun show. And we have a week in geekdom to help us celebrate it. Uh yeah, happy to be here. Uh hello to everybody in the chat, everybody watching later at whatever time it that may be. Uh thank you for joining, liking, and, and being a part of this experience. The Omni Bros live experience at 4,000 members. That's awesome. Nice. That's right. We hit 4,000. So thanks to everybody for all the support. Got us to that 4K. Let's just keep it going. Keep spreading yeah, thanks, the word. Just keep keep telling people about this the show. We I mean this if you're an omnibus collector, I don't see why you're not subscribed to this show and watching this information, especially here on Monday. Like this is the best time. So right. uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share, pass it around, follow us on Instagram, uh, Patreon, check out our Patreon. Uh, we got a lot going on, but thanks to everybody for keeping this show happening. Do you I want remember... to talk about Patreon right now and we figure out a time for our next campfire and then yeah, I'll talk about in stock trades? Let's do it. Where is Okay, so we do have a Patreon, as I was mentioning, everybody. Uh, it's our way to get to know you, our fans in the community and fellow Omnibus collectors more. Uh, we really like interacting with you guys. It's the best part of anything to do with, with this show is the interactions that we have here. A lot of, lot of, lot of jokes, the inside jokes come from the chat. Uh, topics come from the chat. Um, so much comes from you guys that we want to keep an open window, an open door somehow to keep that going. Uh, on a more personal basis. So we do have the Patreon. Uh, it's a dollar for the tip jar. You can edit that all you want. You can make it two bucks. You can make it five bucks, whatever you want. Just just a, a tip jar situation. Uh, but the big part with the community and the uh, idea of the Patreon is the $5 tier. The $5 tier is the campfire tier, where what it is, is it's a private hangout through Zoom with your favorite Omnibros and your maybe not so favorite Omnibros uh, on a personal one-to-one -one, uh, interaction like this. you It's almost like you're on the show, but it's not broadcast. It's like, so we'll be in these little Brady Bunch squares hanging out. We, we chat it up. Um, we try to get to know you guys a lot more uh, and, and, and connect that with the thank you uh, that we have for you and our 4,000 subs. But it ends up turning into another episode that's what happened last time with jess uh we wanted to talk about people in their collections and it just kind of really turned into jess and riley uh having this this conversation back and forth that was uh, incredible uh so yeah that's what the uh the patreon is uh so check out our patreon the link is down below in the description uh and we hope to see you guys soon because the campfire tier is that private meeting is once a month, at least, at least once a month, sometimes twice. Um, usually if something cool comes around, like we did it for uh, DC fandom. We all got together with our Patreon people and, and watched the, uh, the trailers they were doing. Like we did the Batman trailer for the first time when that was first released, we all watched it together and commented on it together. So it was a cool little group hangout. So we do that once a month and I, we're going to figure out what our next date is for, for that. I think, that's going to be coming up hopefully soon because it's already the middle of October, Jess. Yeah. Any Saturday already. date is fine with me. We are still quarantining at Casa de Braggadocia. So nice. it's not like we got any place to go on uh, Saturday nights. I'd yeah. much rather be online. Yeah. Saturdays are usually pretty good for everybody. Um, so maybe let's figure it out. We'll see. What, we're checking with Lou. Uh, I know Riley is out of town. Uh, with whatever he's doing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if he'll be able to make it because I know he's going to be out of town for a couple of weeks uh, with all that stuff. Um, but we'll figure it out. And 
Gio, you're you're not. Yeah, you're, sadly, you're, your weekends are difficult, right? Yeah, I don't I don't do a lot of weekend stuff, uh, internet wise. So I do apologize on that. <laughs> well, we can always figure it out, and maybe we could do it in the middle of the week, also. Yeah, or something like that. So we'll figure it out. It's all good. Uh, all right. So everybody, uh, that's that information there. Uh, today is halls. Reads. Crap. Crap. I gotta grab my halls. Um, and we're gonna take a check in on previews for this week. So you yeah. guys get the releases ahead of time. What's gonna be coming out online uh, and at your local comic book stores uh, this week's releases. And Jess. Where can they find these awesome books that we'll be talking about later today on the show? That would be InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. At the end of every month, IST is kind enough to give us a $50 gift card to uh, give away to a viewer lucky like you. And if you uh, use $50 or more, order $50 or more worth of books on their website, you get free shipping in the United States. Amazing. Which uh, you'll, if you order War of the Realms, you're gonna need free shipping on that. That's a big mama. Uh, fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Hey, the untimely Omar. Hey, what's what up, up, everybody? How what are you guys up, doing? Uh, sorry, I'm a little late. I was recording a video with my wife. The a review video. Oh, let me clarify. That. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. How's everybody doing? We're great. Uh, doing well. Good, good. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's good to be here Monday. Talk about uh, books coming out. I guess tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on where you get your books. So, yeah, I saw that you did your your little jingle, Geo. Those are some nice. Uh, are those boxes? What is that to your what? to your left or right? It looks like you're in a mausoleum of manga. Like if you pull those drawers out, are there body parts in there or no. manga? What's in there? <laughs> no, that's just a closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a closet. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It looks cool. It looks cool. I yeah. thought they were like uh, things. The belly behind me is where I keep all the uh, anime Blu-rays. Gotcha. Yeah, that's yeah. what's up. Um, how are you, Jess? How's the chat? Uh, chat's doing well. Chat's uh, reminding me that I needed to order Terry Moore's uh, Ever, which I did not do, uh, and I'm oh, doing it right now. Sold out, dude. It is. Yeah, it's gone. Really? The trade the trade paperbacks there though. You can get the soft ass cover for bitches. <laughs> That's not true. I got right <laughs> in. I'm jerk. kidding. I'm kidding. Big jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't ordered it either, so good luck. Uh it's fine. It's right here. Yeah. Oh brother. You love to mess with me. I knew as soon I as do, you I do. I do. Yeah. I knew as soon as you said that that it was. Of okay. course, it's what I do, man. Yeah, you do. You like to find everybody's little, little. Um, you like to be the burr under the saddle. The burr under the saddle. Wow. Yeah. Where are you? Like in a spaghetti western? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once, so take it easy. Okay. Good luck. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Gabe has his hand up. What's up, man? Raise your hand if you got that $40 uh, a She-Hulk omnibus. Oh, I did. I've got to admit, I canceled that order, but I what? was going to get it. Because I, I got it because of the price. I didn't really need it because I'm not getting collected editions that often. And I'm like, I don't need it. <laughs> so I canceled it. Uh, yeah. I know. I'm terrible. But nobody you can't do that. Geo. Yeah, you, you can't buy something um, based on just the price, and then make I mean, fun of people. And then go go around and make fun of people who shop at all these. <laughs> I mean, I wanted. <laughs> I like the the story. I've read some of it. Uh, I just saw like, oh, that price is really tempting. I might as well order it. But then I was like, I just bought it for the price, not because I actually wanted to own it. Oh. So I, I canceled. It's, it's a good story, man. I, I like it. You, yeah, you'd like it. It's very. Uh, it's non-traditional superhero. It's it's not yeah. like John Burns' take on what have you you've, you've read it, right? 
parts yeah. of it. Parts, parts of it. Of yeah. It. Well, it's the same thing from beginning to end. So I can't. If you've read parts of it, you know what it's like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, forty dollars. But way to go, Barnes and Noble. Somebody got fired there, and then Amazon <laughs> slipped right in and said, "Oh, we'll yeah. price match that." Somebody <laughs> got wrote up this weekend. So <laughs> it happens, though. Someone got put on the final. Shit like that isn't on sale, man. Somebody made a mistake. Yeah, especially like like two weeks before it's released, too. Yeah, like a, yeah. Like a right now, the targets target sale is going on right now. The buy two get one free. Ooh, yeah. Uh, they have people, a lot of stuff. They have box sets and they have omni um, omni omnis omnibuses. Omnis and box omnib- sets. Omnibus. No, Omnibus. I'm going through the whole thing, man. You call it, you call it whatever you want to. I'm going through Nobody the whole thing. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody. Where's Nobody. David? Go get David. Damn, we kicked Gabe out of here. <laughs> he didn't want to hear it, I guess. He didn't want to see the kids fighting. <laughs> it's been a while. We haven't fought in a while. <laughs> we, we haven't, haven't seen each other in a while. That's why. That's why. <laughs> uh... uh I did get I get I got some books in. So just in time for this. We still doing that? Y'all still do hauls or Yep, we're gonna, we're yep. gonna do this first. Omniboo is acceptable during October. <laughs> <laughs> and it fell boo to you too. So uh, uh Verosa's reader uh says, guys, I sent you pics of my hoodie to your Gmail. So I pulled that awesome. up real quick. Give me a second. Yeah, man. Email, show us. Show us. Email. Oh, was, oh, I got to get. Look at that. Omnibus Collectors Network. Hey, that that's what's up. Nice. That looks so good. That has a good color. Yeah, that's fun. And then there's another pick. And look, let's do a quick shelfie at the same time since she sent us a picture. <laughs> let's see her, what's in the. Uh, zoom zoom in. I want to I see what's in the background here. Let me see. Can I do <laughs> nice job, Voracious Reader. Thank you for getting the, sh- the uh, hoodie. That's a good idea. Thank that, you. It's a nice Who, color. Who's in control of the zoom in right now? Is that not Gabe? Me. Yeah, I am, but it's not doing not anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Gmail sucks. Don't worry. Yeah, about this it. is like the weirdest thing. <laughs> it won't let you. Okay, I more. see Full Metal Alchemist hardcovers. <sighs> 20th, uh, 20th Century, Century Boys. Boys. 20th yeah, Century Boys Perfect Editions. And she's got Irredeemable, the, the Omnibus. Good job grabbing that. Yep. I can't tell what those. Those are a bunch of image to the left. How are you guys seeing that? I think well, birth, birthright. birthright. Yeah, X Men Reloaded is up there. Uh, yeah. Middle uh, Middle East. Yeah, Middle wait, East wait, 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 wait. Oh, X Men Reloaded, not X Men Reload, which is the greatest X Men story ever. Okay, Joe so Cost- Costin. I I mixed it up with Matrix Reloaded. Right. It's always Reloaded. Nice shelf. Nice hoodie. Thank you so much for the picture. Yeah, that's great. Ooh, TMNT Volume 11. That's right. Thank you, Rick. And as proof, we have at least one awesome female viewer. Yeah. Yeah. And she (laughs) bought a sweatshirt. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. That's a really cool (laughs) shelfie. One sweatshirt more than I bought. Nice. You suck. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Manhattan right. Projects is on her left. Good. I didn't see that. Good job. Uh, uh, where are we? Oh, I'm so far behind from where that was. Uh, way to make it weird. He didn't make it weird. Oh, also, if you want to buy a, a hoodie or a sweatshirt, links down below also. And send yep. us pictures. That's cool. A, oh, Manhattan Project's on the left. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rick what Nelson, the... Hell yeah, I know. I know that that volume oh. 4 FF is coming out. Thank you, That's Omar. A... <laughs> I had to tell Gabe. Um, What did you haul Omar? Hey, well, I... Hey, I, I got some stuff Omar. in today. So... I'm going to give you your own theme song. Oh, 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 my. (laughs) There you You guys should bring in Maddie or Amanda on the show. Mix up the sausage fest. Open door? Sure. Anytime. Open door? They know what's up. It's not Omni Bros Live. Whenever they want to. 
Uh, got this. This is what my wife read and reviewed today because she was like, what is this? And I told her what it was. So this is the Batman and Robin that's not collected in the Morrison or the Peter Tomasi uh, omnibus. It's the one that's kind of in between the series because it's written by Paul Cornell, Judd Winnick. Mm-hmm. There's just one one issue that double dips with the Tomasi omnibus, but this wraps up the pre-Flashpoint Batman and Robin. Real? No, it's old. It's out of print. But you could still get it pretty cheap. She wanted to do something like that's like a hidden gem, and I'm like, yeah, okay, you can review that. Finally got this in. Good lord, this thing was four weeks in the mail. Wow. Oh, but it's I finally here. It. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Didn't realize that they're keeping the uh, spine the same as the Greg Rucka stuff. That seems and, like somebody's paying too much attention at DC. That's very unusual. John John Byrne um, stuff. And then, Gio, you'll be proud of me. Well, actually, Gio will be proud of me for all of this. Uh, upgraded to my Full Metal Alchemist. Ooh. Need wow. to get that, get that volume 10, though. Love I am it. an idiot. Got that stuff. And then this finally came in along with my Wonder Woman. Kaiju Max yeah. Volume 2, <laughs> yeah. baby. Oh, awesome. I love this stuff. You you you're getting the trades, if I'm not mistaken, right? You're not getting the oversized uh, hardcovers. No, I ha- I have the two hardcovers. I had okay. the trades and I gave them away <sighs> so I could look upgrade. At that. God, that's beautiful. So much. Yeah. I love the little footnotes. Oh, is that that's on the my... end papers? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's not nice. there. Not there. <laughs> there. Not, not there, there either. either. Only right there. there. <laughs> uh, there the go. coolest thing about this, not as many, unfortunately, as volume one but there's these tiny little footnotes mm-hmm. i love them they're awesome to tell you about what the kaiju is based on what storylines oh it's great man this is such a fun book do you know how many more they're gonna make uh there should be another one a okay. third hardcover cool and that's it nice fine match the wonder woman trades i don't know but they do match the uh uh, Greg Rucka stuff. Greg Rucka to John Byrne and uh, see, I upgraded a lot of them to the Omnis. I don't know if they uh, match the George Perez or not. Yeah. So that's it, my haul for now. Very nice. You Very guys, small. anybody? Haul? I got a small. I got a small one. Uh, small. <laughs> 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 uh, this. I'm behaving. Was... <laughs> this was uh, on sale for five dollars, so I got a copy of PTSD. Great yes. book, awesome yeah. book. You guys talked me into it a long time ago, and I completely forgot. And then I saw it on sale, and yeah, from twenty-five bucks to five dollars, I wasn't going to pass that up. Where was and, that? Uh, at a um, competitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another website. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, I've already read this digitally, but I wanted to own it because I love the story. This is Blank Canvas, my so-called artist's journey. Uh, it is the autobiographical story from Akiko Higashimura. She is the one that did Tokyo Tarabeta Girls and Princess Jellyfish. And she recounts her one. life. Yeah, the, she recounts her life uh, growing up and becoming a mangaka. And she draws her own story in that same art form so it's awesome. a really compelling beautiful story and just really cool artwork is this um, volume three yeah yeah this is volume three uh, i have volume one four and five on the way and i already have volume two somewhere but I, this was the one i was missing to i get don't know why i thing. thought it was a uh, finn from adventure time the way she was dressed oh they never cover. they never do explain why she's <laughs> dressed like that but it's a thing for the you know, she goes through a whole lot. It starts from an early age uh, where she first started reading shoujo manga and mm-hmm. then how she starts getting into art classes and then going into college and getting her first jobs, uh, jobs that didn't involve drawing, and then finally uh, landing a gig at one of the Shonen Jump magazines. I forgot which one it was. And yeah, it's full of interesting stuff. I did a video on the first half of the series on my channel if you want to check it out. But it's really cool. And I wanted to own it physically. So yeah, that's all I got. Is these two. Nice. 
It's a good haul, man. Um, I was thinking when you were talking about that, I was like, is that volume three? Like, how are you going to write about yourself in three volumes, four volumes? Then I'm like, wait, I talk a lot. I bet I could fill up like a, like an oversized hardcover. Here's volume two. I love her art. I was, I'm a big fan of princess jellyfish. Yeah, that's a good one. Who isn't you poser. (laughs) Yeah. So that's all I got. Jess, Gabe, do you guys? I had a small haul. I got, first of all, um, classic Spider-Man. Talk to me into getting <laughs> classic Spider-Man because I don't have enough Spider-Man. I'm starting a new wall, a new door, so I needed another Spider-Man. I don't know if I, I showed off the Moon Knight that I got. Three times. Three. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I think it's awesome. But keep going, man. Yeah, every week, so every good. week you can. I'm going to it every week for yeah. the rest of my life. I love it so much. <laughs> I thought you opened it and posted it already, though. Uh, got, no, no, you have the uh, you have three Walmart moon nights. Now. I uh, I posted the um, you the mezzo one. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you also have the Jeff Lemire version, right? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a uh, uh, on display already. I love that awesome. version too. Um, I filled in the gap, the Judge Dredd gap, so I can continue my readathon. I was awesome. missing a Day of Chaos book, and hopefully, this book will tell me what the heck is going on because uh, I was understanding everything until the, about halfway through, and I was missing a book. So I'm hoping it uh, gets me up to speed. That's what, that's what I'm doing. I've been doing for the past two weeks is reading Judge Dredd for the first I time. Lo- yeah, I love it's it. It's awesome. And so I'm getting the case file, or that's what they sent me, the case files. Uh-huh. But I feel like there are missing gaps in there between, like, especially volumes three and four. And I don't know if – I thought the case files were done in chronological order. I thought they were too. They're not. I thought. Well, maybe something's missing because I feel like there was a a gap, huh? Like a time gap. Uh, time gap. I started my first thing that I started with Judge Dredd was Case Files, Volume Five, and I went from there to a bunch of events and things. So why did you start with Volume Five? That's what everybody told me to do. I put up a a couple oh. times. I put up a thing on the Omnibus Collectors page, and I said. Uh, wanting to get into Judge Dredd, uh, need help. And almost everybody said, start with Case Volume 5, Case Files Volume 5, and then they gave me a list of uh, all these other events and things, uh, hardcover books, trade paperbacks. Yeah. uh, To the catch me up to, like I didn't want to read Case Files 1 through 35. I just wanted to read... um, I just wanted to get a flavor for him, just like a, a taste mm-hmm. of what Judge Dredd was like. So everybody said, read these books. Um, and I got a, I got to... Uh, I got to... Wait, what book is this? Everybody's complimenting the shirts. Thank you all so much. I got to Judge Dredd Origins. And then the next book I went to was a completely different scenario. It was like everything had turned upside down and I had to stop. And apparently this is the book that connects them. Okay. Gotcha. It's a uh, something day of chaos is an event that happens and it's got three books. That's what I was reading day of chaos. And I was like, what is, what in the world's going on? Uh, incorruptible. I got this in nice. Nice. It's pretty yeah. chunky. Yeah, it's if you like thick trades, this is chunky for you. You then have the uh, the trades. Uh, I do. You decided to upgrade to the all in one. Uh yeah, because it's really not any bigger than the trades. I just yeah, like the, the way it looks. It surprises me they never went with hardcovers for that series. I agree with that. It's such a weird move. Um, and. I don't know if I ever showed you this, Omar. 
<laughs> I know why you got it. <laughs> you told me to. It's the it's the first appearance of the new age Pharaoh lad that lasted right. like maybe a month before everybody forgot about him. <laughs> but how about the irony that the first appearance of the new Pharaoh lad is um the 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 first time they meet the sun eater, right? So that's the irony, right? Because yeah. Feral, the original Pharaoh lad. That's what killed him, yeah. So pretty cool, huh? Spoilers. It is. Uh the death of Pharaoh lad, we haven't talked about this on the show. We, must... we talked about that like every other time I'm on. <laughs> I haven't read it and I felt like I've read the damn thing. <laughs> My favorite series ever. Story. You know, speaking of Judge Dredd, it'd be pretty cool if you guys teamed up to do a stream on Judge Dredd. Who, oh, me good. and Omar? Yeah, because you're reading it for the first time. You can call it Dreadful Sundays. I don't know, something like that. Wow, you've been thinking <laughs> about that. <laughs> like a lot. And uh, I think I think we'll piss off the Brits one at a time for now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to microwave my tea and then I'm going to review <laughs> Judge Dredd. Um, it's, been, it's been pretty interesting, though. I really love the art style and, the, the, and what they use. Do you have any of the artist-centric ones? I have the Brian Boland one. That might be the best one, right? Yeah, that's the one I, that I was really... <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, look at the thumbs up. Look at the thumbs up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just became a cam girl on our show. <laughs> <laughs> Next sold time, have to be a super chat. You sold out. <laughs> yeah. I don't microwave tea. I don't even drink tea. Uh, I, was, I was kidding, Jake. Yeah, the Brian Boland book is absolutely gorgeous. His work is, I mean, he, his lines are so clean and just so beautiful. Dreadful reader. I like that. Okay. Uh, Gabe, did you haul anything? Yeah. So uh, I got some good stuff. Gio's going to be proud of me, too. Yeah. It's great. All right. I'm proud so, of all the Abbey Bros. Let's see what you got. Oh, you'll see. So, starting off, uh, New Mutants uh, Cable Marvel Epic Collection. Yes, yeah, right. son. Yeah, boy, this is this is all Rob Liefeld in one big chunky, <laughs> chunky nice epic collection. It's all Rob Liefeld. It starts and ends with Liefeld. There's the the summer specials drawn by uh, what's his name, Brett Blevins, but right. everything else just oh, it's it's uh, that that stuff was my childhood. So I'm a big fan of that stuff. Dude, it's great because I mean, I, I've always said. I've, I've always said that I'm a Rob Liefeld apologist, but I can't see how people can not enjoy this artwork and this, this you can't and this energy. Come on. Yes, you can. No way you can not, not like okay. this. Let, uh, let me show you something that even as a kid bothered me. Uh-oh. I've got the same book. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta poop no, 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 no. I'm not. Uh, you, dude, I love this book. All right, let me show you something that as a kid, when I, when this right. issue came out, bothered the hell out of me. All right. So we have the fight in the sewers. There's Richter, right? So Richter's got a vest. Okay. And I'm like, all right, cool. Richter's using his power. Oh, shit. He's got uh, now his vest went Wife away. Peter. He's got his... <laughs> and then, oh, wait, no, no. His vest is back. Cool. <laughs> all right. Now, now, same page, right? Vest. Where's it at? Vest. Yeah. And then down here. No vest. <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe his mutant power is to create a uh, vest. Ah, eh, fuck. And then at one point, like, he's not even wearing a shirt. That's just hot. Yeah, it's just a bunch of weird inconsistency in his artwork that people saw, right? But that was the only time that I was this thinking, guy was like that's... 17. Well, no, he was probably like 19. Dude, he's, he's still was... making the same mistakes at 40. It's not like he <laughs> learned guy, a lesson. He's just 50, man. Come on. He's, just, he's no, an no, old guy I, now. Leave him alone. I, I like it. Wait a minute. Don't don't say that now. 50 is not old. Um, But 
I like him too. But I also no, this stuff is amazing. Confuse the shit out of me when I'm like, so is he wearing a wife beater? Or is he wearing a vest? What is he wearing? That's a color is his problem. The colors could have fixed that. Oh, the color is. <laughs> <laughs> How's the colors not notice? Did you not say anything? He was like, hey, man. Uh, because the colors was like, I don't the know the what the hell here. I'm doing. Maybe his mutant power is to create clothes. <laughs> I thought you were mad because he was a Hispanic character wearing a wife beater, and that was uh, stereotypical. Dude, Richter is as white as they come in this sh- book. I think he doesn't even, what, he doesn't even speak better. Spanish. It's a well-known fact that when Richter uses his powers, his vest disappears. Shut up! Omar is barely even a comics fan. <laughs> oh, make havoc! Omar is a hater. <laughs> a vest hater. Wow! Art Adams. I, I, I spit a little truth, and I get called a hater. All right. <laughs> you some Art Adams. In <laughs> I'm talking book? about Rob Liefeld, somebody that I actually like. No, I'm yes, about you have Art Adams up there. Art Adams up now. Yeah, there's a guy Art Adams what, in this too. What is really stuff. weird is that they left part one out of that uh, storyline out with the Fantastic Four, but everything else is included. The X Factor and the Uncanny, which is the Uncanny Annual, is of course the the big debate. I don't know who it, this, but this is fucking cool. Brett Blevins. Uh, Good job. The the Annual is the one that everybody thinks it's either Gambit's first appearance, it's his official yeah. first appearance. Because he's in that background, that crowd scene. Oh, he's on the cover, too. And and he's in the book. Yeah. Um, I always thought that was interesting that they consider this maybe his first appearance. And I think correct that he's not on the cover. I got him confused with Forge. How dare I? <laughs> Lightfield hasn't blocked me yet. <laughs> Apparently, he's blocked a lot of people. Y'all need to quit talking ill about the man. Yeah, so there's that. And what else did you get? So I can I bring it. bring out the copy. Yes! Chainsaw that- Man. <laughs> oh, <Wow. laughs> one. That book <laughs> yeah. is so awesome. This book, I haven't read much of it yet. I'm probably about, you know, I'm probably about 20 pages in, but it's cool. It's has he used his head yet to chainsaw somebody? Uh, I, he at this point where I'm at is not quite Chainsaw Man, so this is the origin of Chainsaw oh. Man. So, but it yeah, gets it's, crazier by the chapter. Well, I mean, you're in for a wild ride, man. He's got a pet pig with a chainsaw through its face. What? So what the story got? is so far where I'm at with this, Jess, is <laughs> it's this kid. They're all kids in, in, these, in these mangas, you know, whatever. They're, you know, he's probably 15. But uh, so this kid is, uh, he starts out, he finds out his, he's like an orphan. And his dad apparently owed a ton of money to the, the Yakuza, like a ton of money. So this kid has now inherited that, that debt to, uh, to the Yakuza. And the way he's like shaving off his debt is by selling parts of his body, like his eye. That's why he has an eye patch because he sold his eye for uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, he sold his kidney. He's just selling body parts. Uh, but the best way for him to make money to pay off his debt is by murdering these giant monsters. And mm-hmm. that's kind of where I'm at in the story. For the most part, he is like a a, a monster killer. So he's he lacking body. lacking body parts and killing monsters. So he hasn't turned into chainsaw head yet. Right, right. But his little chainsaw head guy is just this little like pig pet thing. That's a chainsaw. That's oh. a weapon for killing all these monsters. Now. Oh. Okay. Now, but the monsters are not all, you know, just idiot dumb monsters. There's some smart monsters here who have now uh, are paying off humans to help them get more uh, more monsters and to kill, actually kill uh, these monster killers. So now he's no. got that going after him. And then this is where it starts to get all bloody and gory and he gets, you know, he gets all kinds of stabbed at by uh, all these zombies and stuff like that. But that's where I'm at with it right now. So... But Chainsaw Man is back. Uh, yeah, I want, I want you to keep us posted on your progress in that. 
Yeah. Yeah. That sounds no like idea. the greatest book ever. <laughs> you have no idea how bonkers the series is going to get as you keep reading chapter after chapter. It is insanely great. I really liked it. It's a quick read, yeah. read too. I was I was wanting, oh, yeah. wanting more. Mm-hmm. But when he starts like hacking demons off, when he's got the chainsaw on his head and arms. Oh, that part's so badass. That sounds so cool. It is, dude. You're gonna wish it was written. Uh, I do left it. to right. I'm totally wishing that right now. I think it's an easy read. Uh, that Have you, you won't be too confused with the page orientation. I think you could give it a go. Have you tried reading it in front of a mirror? <laughs> no. Just okay. Maybe no. you should try that. Re- uh, reading in front of the mirror, really? So That's you're easy. reading in your traditional left to right. But now the words Just looking to read backwards. But the, the words, words are going to be backwards. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Unless you put another mirror. And uh, then it just gets too complicated, but yeah. Yeah. Is I that, that it? I think, that like, I think that's the witch roll that you use to open up that box from Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting Probably. to be that time of year, man. Man. Right. I'm going to start Haunting of Hell House this week. The second Hill one? House. Haunting of Hill House. No, I haven't even seen the first one. Oh, yeah. It's pretty solid, man. Jess, you got a shout out from Jake. You got a shout out from Jake Negan, buddy. A- after he said some really odd things. Yeah. That so, Jake, you're creeping me out, buddy. <laughs> this Jake cannot be as bad as the guy that wanted to eat nacho cheese off your chest. Oh my god, I forgot that about that. Strictly between the six of us, you were not <laughs> supposed to. Ah, uh, you didn't say that. You know what? That was two years <laughs> ago. Why? That was, that was, was the two years ever. That was two years ago. You're fine. Look, we scared Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's oh up, Beppo? <clears throat> Italy. Thank you for joining Ooh, us. Nice. Oh, look at that! The uh, Nova helmet. Awesome. So is, is Gabe really gone? Because he's the one that controls the... Uh... He'll be back. Is that how we summon Gabe? That is. <laughs> Amazing scene. And I'm back. Wow, that worked. Okay. Right, so what's up? <laughs> what, what did Jake read? Nah, never mind. Don't... Yeah. <laughs> never mind. What, uh, what have we been reading? A lot. I've been reading a lot. What about you guys? I've been reading the back of this Moon Knight package. You, you really like that toy, man. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> what, what's the story on that toy? Is it on the yeah. exclusive somewhere or what? Uh, it's a Walgreens exclusive, yeah. And I never find them at Walgreens. Um, what, a, what an odd choice for toy exclusives. I always Transformers yeah. have the same thing, too. Like a pharmacy. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Like you're it gonna works. go and pick up your medicine. Yeah, because you have a bunch of toy scalpers going in there and buying up the lot. Yeah, and while they're there, you're like totally true. I'm and, gonna get uh, a bag of Doritos and a Mountain Dew while I'm here too. The um yep. okay. It's a, it's a new Walgreens that took over the Rite Aid that was in my neighborhood. So scalpers haven't found it yet. And so I found two of these. I also found all the Stefford Cuckoos. Back when they were hot, back in January, so that was uh, I'm really that's why this is a big deal. Yeah, because I'm actually have, finding them in the in the out in the public. They also do the pops. They got a lot of exclusive pops. A lot of exclusive pops. Yeah, the Spider Man franchise. They've got that license. Same with the Marvel Legends. Yeah. So pops are still a thing, huh? Oh yeah, they're going strong. That's good. Who do we do? You still collect them, Gio? I I don't have any room for them. I stopped. I had to stop. Yeah, I had to stop too. Yeah. Plus, uh, I don't know if you can see behind me. You see the uh, ten-inch pops. Those things are pricey. I I wanted more, but uh, you're gonna run out of money if you start collecting those because easily uh, forty, fifty bucks to ship them. Uh, you know, buying them and shipping, uh, no, it adds up quickly. What's the most rather... expensive pop you have? 
Uh, the Lord of the Rings two pack of Aragorn and um, oh my gosh, what's her face? Liv Tyler. I forgot her character's name. Uh, oh yeah, Elphaba or something. She's the elf. Uh, yeah, L'Oreal. Um, nope. No, no, like no. Um, Gwendolyn. Uh, hold on. It's a, no, I'm helping. It's, I love Lord of the Rings and I can't remember the name. Alicia Silverstone. I cannot remember. No, wait, that's Keep the away. crazy music video. Arwen. 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 I was close. Thank you. Not so there's even. Two, there's a San Diego Comic Con 2017 or 18, uh, a two pack that was exclusive to that con. And I was able to get a copy or not a copy, uh, uh, a pop two pack. And that thing is selling for 180, 200 bucks right now. Nice. Nice. So I'm man. really, uh, do, you I'm have a, super... do you have a yeah, clue? Like, is it sealed or do you have yeah. it opened? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cause I, I do want to sell it. <laughs> oh, cool. I, Cause uh, I don't have room for it and I'd rather somebody else get it. And I want to take advantage <laughs> that it's a rare item. So I do want to sell it. It's just, I'm super lazy about it. I haven't done it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's still in there somewhere. And all my pops are opened except that. So I did uh, do the GameStop pop for Ein though for Cowboy Bebop. I did that's have a, to have that flocked one. But what if they make one. the rest of the swordfish crew? I'm you can't thinking. you can't leave Ein alone. You need no, Spike and you you need Jet. No. They're already out. They're I have out. I have a flock dog collection. I've got um uh, I've got the, oh flocked um oh shoot Snoopy. what's the monkey's name space oh, Cos Cosmo Cosmo he's not yeah. a monkey he's a dog uh yeah From I like Guardians dog. okay yeah so I'm I'm cool with just Ayn and it comes with a T-shirt too yeah I got the Bebop set I can show that off real quick do it sure what do Give you got man. That was a good go question it. from Asian Johnny Depp. I like. I really like this question. Um, Me too, because I do think Maverick is one of the coolest non-mainstream X-Men characters. He he definitely is one of the coolest. Well, he just said non-mainstream. So when I think of non-mainstream, I think most of the time it's a uh, '80s and '90s obscure characters that had a really good run that go, you know, hidden because not a lot of people talk about. And I think uh, Maverick, Maverick had a badass series. In he had one a shot. fantasy series of uh, Jimmy Chung, Jim Chung. That Jim Chung's first book. I, I talked about it. all my issues are signed from by Jim Chung. I talked about that book forever. Uh, it's a solid book. And then there was that one shot that uh, mm -hmm. Mark Tex did. That's incredible. Yeah, and he's a Jim Lee character that that he created like early in it was like X Men Four and Five was his first appearance. Yeah, he was part of the Weapon X. Anytime you linked uh, somebody to the Weapon X project, all right, there's your spike. Uh -huh. Who else? Who else you got? There's Jet. Jet. There's Faye. And there's the other one right there. You got Ed right there with a tiny eye. Oh, oh that eye is adorable. With Ed, that's great. Yeah, but the one Jess got is. Full size pop and it's flocked. What's flocked? Like he's uh, like felt it. Fuzzy. Oh, <laughs> fuzzy. fuzzy. Felt gotcha. it. I felt it. <laughs> gotcha. I think make of uh, Havoc. Oh, I was saying make havoc said he sold a couple pops for thirteen hundred bucks. What pops did you sell for that kind of dosh? Uh, make havoc. How much coke can you put inside of a pop? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question y'all should be asking. I think you of Jack, Jack Monroe, uh, Nomad. That's when I think of like a unrated or a character that nobody talks about. And his run was awesome. And uh, Jake grabbed the uh, absolute fourth rope because he watched my video. Thanks, man. That's nice. a beautiful. That thing is incredible. Still the coolest book that DC's put out is that fourth rope absolute. I hope they the, make another one. Is that the nicest kind of? Present presented nicest made book in your collection, do you feel? Or one of them? Um, probably. I mean, I just, off the top of my head, that would be the, the nicest looking one. 
It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, the, the slip case and it has that hole that cuts out so you can see <laughs> Dark Side's face in it. It's great how they put it together. The designer of that book commented on my video and was like, hey, man, thanks for the shout outs on the video. Thanks for the compliments on. Did you ask him designer. if he's working on a volume two? No, I don't care because I know there's going to be a volume two. <laughs> I think so. Shit. Out. There's no way. Oh, <laughs> ah, it is DC. Dude, Sorry. Everything sells out, though. Yeah. Look at yeah. Batman by Scott Snyder. The Hell's Volume 2. Not no, even we, can, not even canceled and moved to another we uh, knew month. that was going to happen. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah, I agree. Like, <laughs> where is that? How is that, how is that not produced already? So, some, uh, and somebody asked the question about uh, in the chat. So, Batwoman has moved. Starman Compendium has moved. Everything has moved. Uh, until the third and fourth quarter of 2021. Oh, wow. And some books are moved into 2022, which is insane. <laughs> so yeah. one of the things is that probably the people that were let go were working on those projects. So we're lucky that it's still in the catalog and they're still coming, but more than likely half of those books are going to be canceled for good. Ugh. Which sucks because there's some really good books there. Don't worry, your golden age is still coming. I promise that's not one of the books that's going to get canceled. I want the I silver promise. age and the bronze age is what I want. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, think I love this comment. Don't <laughs> put that DC out in the world. Shit. <laughs> that, that is no lie. I have I have high hopes for the new... It, new. Okay, so new. here's the thing I don't think we talked about. I, I don't really talk about it on my show. But DC doesn't have a collected editions department, really. No, they don't. They fired everybody. So pretty much is if you want to work on a project and you are the editor of said book, it is your job to come out, to come up with a team to make a uh, collected edition. Yeah. WB doesn't give a shit about these things. That's too much Just work. we do. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the problems right now, which is what they're probably – they need somebody because they're literally sitting on money, but – um, I I don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be There's weird. So I do I do know stuff. that Absolute Swamp Thing is coming for sure, one hundred percent. The reprint of Absolute Swamp Thing is is already hitting some stores and will be out next week. So that's I definitely. It. I agree when you say they're sitting on money. There's so many good. Oh yeah, that people have forgotten about that need to be reprinted in the collect edition. I mean, look how poorly they've collected the '80s and '90s. Dude, where's, it's, where's, it's horrible. Where's the Lobo anything? Well, somebody, um, I got a Lobo book, and then somebody told me that there are two Alan Grant Lobo books out that he did. So, but I, that had to have been forever ago. Like, right, we need more like demon stuff out there. More etric, they really need some more etric and like demon stuff out there. Lobo stuff for sure. There's so much Lobo stuff that they could put out as well. But yeah, they orphaned so many other series too that they were sitting on. Green. Well, and I think that's Green that's Rainer. the problem is people lose faith. Yeah, you know, you start losing faith in a company that's canceling everything, so you're not you're not gonna buy a volume one of a new project they're working on because what's the point when you when you know they're gonna cancel volume two or three? So I'm hoping with this new regime, like maybe maybe they hire somebody that is a fan and you know uh, can do the job too. So how, we'll, how, we'll see. How was there really a reason given for those firings? Was it cost cutting or cost cutting across the board? Uh -huh. So mainly it was the com comics. You know, we talked about this, like how much a Batman kite makes them more money a year than any of the right. comics. Right. So they don't really, they don't really need the comics. They all they need is just the movies or whatever, right? So that's part of the problem. Like with that mentality, it's like well. Let's just start cutting jobs. You start cutting jobs, and what was it, 30%, I think? Dude, all my contacts are gone. Every single mm -hmm. one of my contacts at DC is gone. I still talk to mm -hmm. Hank from time to time. on, uh, And Hank is really good friends with, uh, what's his name, Rob Liefeld. Um, oh, so we Hank, were, we were talk Hank uh, Canals? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was one of so, the, he's like the fifth Beatle of the image group. Yep, yep. Or and Beatle, well, yeah. he, he went on to... Oh. You know, to take over the collected editions department over there at DC, and he's the guy that I talked to about Starman. He was a really nice dude, and he wanted to make it work. He was guaranteeing me. He's like, "We're not going anywhere. Collected editions are here to stay." When everybody was getting worried at the beginning of this year, and then bam, mm -hmm. like that, lost his job. 
That's too bad. It sucks, man. Wow. So, but we'll 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 see what happens. You know, maybe they bring in some new blood. I don't know. It's just really weird. Um, it's a weird time. But let's talk about some good things, though. Let's talk about some things coming out tomorrow, right? Do we talk about our reads? Shit, did we? No. Somebody <laughs> no. asked a good question. Was it the Maverick question? It was a Maverick question. <laughs> that the Maverick. I like we don't have to talk about our reads if you don't want to. We That's a good go format. Yeah, we should do – maybe we should think about it where after guys. every little segment we start taking questions or something like – Jess, you show your hall, we take questions. Omar shows his hall, we take questions. Geo shows uh, his hall. You see that questions. comment from Commander Zero? Can you highlight that, Jess? It's at 859. Oh, okay. I got you, dude. So I work for DC's new corporate overlords. All they do is cut jobs. It is Yay. the corporate culture, and that is yeah. shit. That's, it's, it, I mean, not to it, get into it's, that it's, idea, but... it's How do I say it? Like, Marvel and Disney, that combination makes sense. Are we sure right? we you trust think- that guy who spells corporate cooperate? What are you trying to say? Bad spellers aren't smart? <laughs> <laughs> so I think like when you have a company like Disney and Marvel, that makes sense and it works. But when you have AT&T and WB and DC, you know, I, AT&T. Like, what the hell does that have to do with comics? Yeah, it's weird, right? But and they have billions in debt, so they're looking to cut wherever they can. What they really need to do is give Dark Horse all the crap to to print. Put them in charge of the collected editions. Dark Horse or uh, IDW, IDW. Yeah. somebody mm-hmm. that's hurting. They can benefit yeah. off of each other. If they don't re- if they want to <laughs> save money, then you contract that stuff out. You don't I'm have sorry, to pay dude. benefits. Yeah, that's it. If they cared, all right. I don't know if they even do that. Yeah. Omar, thanks for the tip about. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Thanks for the tip about waiting for the uh, reprint of the Don Rosa books. You got it, man. They just came back in stock, and I got what I was missing. Got a complete collection now. You are so welcome, dude. Enjoy that. Thank you. It's it's one of the best comics ever. I uh, never. <laughs> yeah, the, the irony of that statement is all. I know. I love that one right there. And we <laughs> degree you. Um, I've never had a chance to get uh, Don Rosa's uh, signature in a book. I've seen him twice at Baltimore, both times with you, Omar. And yep. he talks to every single person like they're a member of his family for like twenty minutes, and the the lines like three people forever. You just can't. I can't get anything signed by him because he's so friendly. Yeah, I need um did I, I told you he invited me to his house, right? Did yeah. I tell you guys that? Yeah. But uh, we have this pandemic going on, so I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be like, hey man, can I still come over? Uh so I'm gonna get him to sign something for you. I'm gonna get a copy of Beautiful Darkness and I'm gonna get him to draw. <laughs> Have it read wrong, my God. <laughs> no, I'm just going to get him to sign it. He's going to be like, what the hell is this? Do not let Dark Horse be in charge of printing. Their books are always out of print. That's got something to do with... <sighs> That's more to do with Diamond and the orders they're putting in. and Not really Dark Horse. But, I mean, when you're in charge of DC, though, that's a little... Or when you're in charge of collected editions at DC, that's a little bit different, though. You, you're going to have to meet the man. I invited you to his house. It puts the lotion in the basket or Omar. Yeah, I guess I'll so. read that. Worth it. Don <laughs> Rosa? He can put my ass in a well and play. <laughs> Threaten to break my dog's neck. Wear my skin. Whatever. It's Don Rosa, man. There's a few creators <laughs> I let that happen to. Anyway, that's another episode. Bendis is one of them, right? No. Oh. That's a flat out no. <laughs> it's because he's bald. <laughs> Nope, nope. I'm a big fan of Grant Morrison. Don't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so reads. Oh, are we doing that? Okay. Uh, what'd you let's all read? Go by, let's go by real quick. I only read uh, Mashal, which is a new manga that's coming out in Shonen Jump. I put a video out today on it if you guys want to check it out. it's uh, It starts out as a parody between... Uh, like a Harry Potter type book mixed with One Punch Man. 
but then it evolves into like battle shown and stuff with a character that is in this world that everybody's using magic and he's the only one that can't use magic, but he's freakishly strong. So he has to rely on his muscles uh, to, you know, pass different tests and enter this school for magicians. It's really funny and action packed. So I do recommend it. It's a fun read. And Babylon is asking if I tried Spy Family. Yes, I did a review on volume one on this channel. Uh, I think I left it at volume three. Uh, I need to keep up with that. But it's a fun series, Spy Family. That's all I read. Sorry. <laughs> I read Joe Hill, Basket Full of Heads. Nice. I read it and reviewed it with Omnicat. Uh, I thought this book rocked. I thought it was really good. It uh, based on the premise that um, a teenager uh, is gets in um, trouble with uh, bad guys on a island, uh, island uh, like a Martha's Vineyard type island, um, where bad guys are after her, and she uh, discovers a magic axe for, that is like a Viking axe. She chops off their the guy's head and the head's still alive and talking. And so she ends up with a basketful of talking heads as she tries to solve this mystery, find her boyfriend. And it's a big whodunit that's really good. Nice. Really it's a funny whodunit that I love the whole way through. And it was uh, actually a pretty nice package too. Pretty nice book. Oh, look at that. Nice. Yeah. I liked it. What is and, that? What kind of what, what kind of uh, dust jacket is that, Gabe? Or or do you, do any of you know what is that called? Vellum. Acetate? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's yeah, in acetate. The real, it's acetate. Vellum. This kind of paper that you can see through, sort of. Yeah. I think it's called vellum. It's acetate. Acetate. Yeah. Can Jess hear you all? I, or he doesn't give a shit. I don't he give a shit. shit. He doesn't, he doesn't give a shit what they think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, what the hell these two assholes know? No. Is that, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, Jess, with this. Is that the same material from the Harley Quinn? Uh, uh, oh, shoot. The, the book that you like from Harley Quinn that was released this year. I forgot the Harleen? name. Harleen? Harleen? That's the same, same book, right? the, the same type of book, cover, right? The same type of cover? Oh. Um. Let's see. No, that that Harleen actually is acetate. Oh, all right. You two, you, you is, two Latinos just got schooled. Yeah. yeah. This Tell, is vellum. vellum. I ain't never heard that damn term. I thought that was an animal term. <laughs> and then vellum. she and I reviewed, uh, I have one, uh, the other one on my iPad, one through five of Ice Cream Man. Great horror anthology. Fantastic artwork. Really super interesting stories that are uh, scary, uh, psychologically disturbing, and the, the uh, layouts that the artist does are really cool. There's one called Strange Neapolitan, when the, the guy gets a Neapolitan flavor from the ice cream man, and it tells a story uh, three different directions his life could go. Um, and it, the way it's laid out is just so cool. Um, I and it's got a, an overarching type of theme to it. You can read the stories individually. I agree, Babylon Shadows, and it's going to get one because I have all the trades. Um, <laughs> How many are? Um, isn't it? Is it still ongoing? As far ongoing. as I know, this is volume five, and it didn't. It didn't say that's it. It just said, don't let the bed bugs bite. Thank you for your sacrifice, Yes. Yeah. It's got they, released a, they released a quarantine edition not too long ago. Oh, they did? Like a, like a little one-shot on the some website. I'm not too sure which of the stores were, they were selling a quarantine edition of the book. Mm, I'm going to have to look yeah. into that. It's new material? I think so, yeah. Hmm. Quarantine Comics Special is the name. Quarantine Comics Special. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, this is one of the better books uh, since I'm trying to do 
Uh, some of them came out in 2018. The ones that came out this year will make my list as the top books of 2020. It's just incredibly well told, scary, disturbing, deeply thoughtful, really interesting, um, well done book. I love all of them. This this guy, I don't even know him, W. Maxwell Prince, amazing writer. Uh, amazing. And I love the art too. Love it. Can I share the photo real quick of that book? Yeah, can you send me the address? Here's a link from Image. That's the special that came out back in September. That's cool. Yeah. I've only read the first six issues, and I really liked it. Or whatever, whatever the first trade paperback had. It was really good. Yeah. Oh, it's so good, Omar. I, I know you would dig it. Uh, no, I'm going to continue reading it. I was hoping our uh, we we put a poll for old reader, new reader, and American Vampire won um, again against which you know it's good. The American Vampire is solid too. Yeah. Gabe or Jess, were you done? I'm sorry. I am done. Thank you. Oh yeah, no, I already talked about um, Moon, Moon Knight. Knight. Yeah, <laughs> my man. <Nice. laughs> what, uh, what about you, Gabe? All right, so just that little bit of uh, Chainsaw Man that I was telling you guys about. Uh, but first off, what it really was I was reading is I got... Ah, oh, yes. Batman nice Three cover. Jokers number two. Yeah, this cover is beautiful. Uh, Jason Fabok is... It's got to be like the greatest artist in comics right now. Like his work in this series... Jason Fabok has arrived. Like this is his Alex Ross moment where it's like, this guy can be this good... On, on a he, book like this, did he do the covers too? He did the covers also. Yeah, yeah. this okay. is very Brian. We, we were talking about Brian Bolin earlier when you were talking about your Judge Dread stuff, but uh, Jason Fabok is he's definitely has some Brian Bolin influence and a little bit of uh, Gary Frank as well. Mm. And, uh, art in here is great. The story in here is Jeff Johns is great. Uh, issue two focuses a lot on uh, on Red Hood and uh, poor Red Hood. I don't want to show too much to give any kind of spoilers, but uh, I don't. I, I, I hope and I think, and it'd be kind of cool if we got a uh, a change to Red Hood because he is being. Uh, there's a lot going on with him in this book that I think is going to change him forever in a negative way. Oh. And I'm going to be interested in seeing where that comes from too. Oh so, boy. Yeah, good stuff in here though. Good stuff. Uh, I can't wait for. A hardcover of this to come out. It's gonna be amazing. It's, it's only three issues. Like right? a, it's only three issues, okay. so it'll probably mean DC will put it in a uh, a trade paperback and and that'll be it. And we'll never get a hardcover out of it or absolute <laughs> or anything decent. Didn't they already announce uh, one? Did they? Yeah, they already announced the collection. I think. I thought it was for November sometime. If I'm not mistaken. I'm in. Yeah. Hmm. I'm in. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, uh, Geo, what did you order? I'll talk about this when we go over the books. I talked about uh, Mashal, the magic comedy manga. Okay, uh, really quick so we can get started. Um, I read Geo, which is uh, Junji Ito's book about the smelly fish. Yeah, uh, it's gross, it's great, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> finished out Peter David's Hulk volume two, wonderful. I cannot wait for volume three. Uh, read some X Men Legends, which I hadn't been. So I'm taking a break from old reader, new reader for a month to catch up on things that I really, really want to read that I'm so behind on. Because I'm finally, finally caught up on uh, current X Men, and I read the first two chapter or first chapter of X of Swords. Uh, read the Man of Steel, the hardcover, and uh, what was the manga the that Byrne? I read? Yeah, Brown. yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. think? You'd be better off with the trade paperbacks of that run. You, but I sold you my trade paperbacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, remember because I have them uh, custom bound. Uh, right. Because I thought by now we'd have an omnibus, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. I, I love it. I've always liked it. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's the it's to me the one of the best runs of Superman. It's phenomenal. 
and just and then when you add in Dan Jurgens and Roger Stern into the triangle years, oh god, it's so good. Uh, what was the Mong Oran Host Club? That was it. Oh, nice it's manga that my wife really liked, and I wanted to start reading it, so I read a little bit of that, and that's that's it. Um, cool. Let's nice. rock. Let's do it. Let's look at these books coming out. Oh, wait. Awesome. That's nice. Nice compliment. Thank you all. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. You ready to do this? Yeah. Let's rock. Yeah. All right. Let's make you this know, happen here. Buddy. While we do previews, I made up a poll uh, for the chat. And I'm asking in that poll, uh, what book are you most excited for this week? So while you look at the previews, you can participate in that poll. I'm going to post it up in the chat uh, in a couple seconds. So if you could participate, that'd be really cool. And we can see a live uh, real-time poll to see what you guys are getting. That's awesome, dude. Thank you, Gio. That's yeah. cool. See, man, that's, that's how we get back with the community, man. We're just here to hang out with everybody. <laughs> Giving back. Yeah. We're paying it forward. <laughs> that you? <laughs> Both. <laughs> All right, let's make it up. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get this started up. It's uh, here's the release uh, issues or the release books coming out uh, this Wednesday, October fourteenth. Uh, but these will go up on sale on InStockTrades.com tomorrow, uh, 12 noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. for uh, the Eastern time people. And uh, let's go and get this through. Let's go and start this up real quick. Everybody give us that thumbs up. If your first time here, give us that sub. And let's start off with image this week. Is this, is this too, too zoomed in? Should I zoom in? No, okay. you're fine. Oh, no. I like that better. Before. There we go. Like that? All right. Perfect. Yep. All right. So this week we have uh, Bitter Root, Trade Paperback Volume 2, uh, Dracula Motherfucker, hardcover. Oh, I have to get that. <laughs> I love that. That's love a great that. title. Yeah, Bitter, Bitter Root. Title. If, have you guys read Bitter Root? Because it is freaking excellent. If you've I've heard nothing but great things about it, but I have not picked up Same. any Anything that gets more than one trade for image, I'm going to start reading on Hoopla and then get the hardcover when it comes out. Because it's like all, all those image books always get a hardcover. Mm, and don't say always. Well, this has been super popular and it's really good. So I have a feeling that it will get a, uh, a hardcover. It's, it's supposed to be amazing. Um, Gio, if you've not read this, I think out of the four of us, you would enjoy this the most. It has wanna... a kick-ass anime feel to it. And oh, think so it's I like it it's Harlem in the twenties with an anime twist. Oh, it's so good, dude! Oh, nice. but... I love Sanford Green's artwork too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to check it out. All right, uh, Dark Horse Look, this week. Jess has it. Jess has it. What's up? Nice. <laughs> Uh, we got Avatar Last Airbender, uh, Pirate Silver Trade Paperback Volume 00, <laughs> um, Mob Cycle 100 Trade Paperback Volume 6. Yeah, nice. And that's that for Dark Horse. IDW, this week we got the uh, Krull Lith. I have no idea what that is. Either way. Uh, Krull I think Trade the vellum cover. You mean acetate? No. Oh. No. And then, uh, oh, this is great. The Yay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ongoing volume 11. Nice. Hell yes. Yes. Hell yes. Geo changed my life. Have Getting me into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Talk I'm me so in. proud of that. You talked me into it, and I love them. It's so good. All right, uh, DC this week. Uh, this is just a small tidbit of it. I think we have more on the other side. Let's see what we have here through Diamond this week. This shit's so confusing. This <laughs> yeah, they got to figure it out. Like this, one way or the other. this book's been out for almost a month now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, looks like Absolute Dark Knight hardcover is getting released again. So cool. Uh, Absolute Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. 
Volume One. Is it Volume One or Volume Two that's coming out this week? Maybe volume Two comes out next week. That's Maybe next that's week. better binding. That's the that's the rumor, and it's supposed to Maybe be Maybe it's better white coloring. White. That's no, no, sorry, no. <laughs> no. They're not going to buy it. And uh, DC graphic novels for young adults box set. That's nice. You have hmm. all these already, don't you, Jess? Um, I. It's a DC Inc. stuff. Like it's got Mira, Harley Quinn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I know you got the yeah, yeah, because you got the Harley Quinn Breaking Glass. I remember that. Right. All right, and for Marvel, uh, I'm, I'm this is my my book of the week for myself. It's going to be this epic collection: Captain America, Monsters and Men. Awesome, Mike Zek. I think this whole entire book is basically Mike Zek art. So, mm-hmm. just about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's a couple villain artists, but it's so good. Yeah, he's a Captain America artist that I don't think people get. I don't think he gets enough respect for his Captain America work. His uh, cover to the annual is one of the most iconic images, though the one where Wolverine. Wolverine's slashing yeah. through. He's the guy that drew uh, Secret Wars. He's an yeah. excellent, excellent artist. I've uh, he's been at the store. He's been at Torpedo. He's an incredibly nice, like Southern gentleman type guy. Uh, he's actually going to be back at the store later this month. I think the 24th, him, Shooter, and John Beatty. But he's great. Nice. He, he still knocks it out of the park when he does sketches and stuff like that. He still got it. He's a super nice guy, too. Yeah. He was in Baltimore last year when I went to go see Jess. Mm-hmm. He's one of the guys I talked to for a long time. Yeah. Oh, so he did? I didn't remember that. Mm-hmm. He was there um, signing mainly Secret Wars. <laughs> Everybody had Secret Wars 8 for him to sign, which is the... Costume, oh, okay. black costume. The black costume. Yeah. yeah, dude, have you all read this? The uh, Al Ewing run oh, of Guardians. Guardians? Yeah. I, was, I read that last week as soon as he came in. Oh my god, it's so good! Oh, oh yeah? good, it's so good. I really enjoyed it. Totally getting it then. Then we got Iron Man 2020. That's the uh, quarantine COVID Iron Man series. Not really. Oh, that's a Dan Slott Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, it's a Christos Gage and Dan Slott. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. It's not the same guy from the 80s. It's a different character with the same name, but I dig it. And then uh, Marvel Horror Lives Again on the bus. What's this, Omar? So this is a collection of too much. Oh, they don't even show the good cover. Not that there's anything wrong with John Romita Sr. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> but... In Hugh Lee's cover is fucking gorgeous, dude. Like yeah. super hot, super hot. Um, and it's a standard edition cover. So mm-hmm. it's a collection and anthology of characters like uh, do we have to Google uh, Lilith, Satana? Yeah. Uh, it's got a little bit of Blade in there. So kind of like Marvel horror last year, where it focused on the Mummy and uh, Zombie. This one focuses on other characters, and there's enough because they also leave Frankenstein out. So maybe next year we'll get. Marvel horror lives yet again, or more Marvel horror omnibus, whatever it is. Mm. But um, it is, it's really good. Those issues of two and Dracula haven't been collected in omnibus format. Um, there's just a tiny little bit of double dipping, not a lot because, um, because of two and Dracula and blade. But I think uh, I really enjoyed it. It's not how the hell does nobody ha- just Google it. I did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Google in Hugh Lee, uh, uh, Marvel, yeah. Marvel Horror Lives Again Omnibus Hardcover and York Lee cover? It, nothing. Just get, okay, get rid of the hook cover. Because it's the standard edition. It's on, It'll show it's up. On, uh, it's on Amazon, the cover. Yeah. Just hit, go hit enter. Amazon. There you go. Where? What engine are you using? <laughs> Google? <laughs> oh, never heard of it. Uh, <laughs> Marvel Horror Lives Again Omnibus. Yeah, you're spelling it right. Just yeah, I would get rid of his I, name, honestly. Just type Marvel Horror Lives Again Omnibus. You'll see it. I right could away. go get it, but it's like on the other side of my bookcases, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> the oh, other, I think you can see the other side of your house. <laughs> it's over there. I, I, I literally there just oh, look at that cover. Man, it's hot. That one right there. Yeah, yeah. zoom in on that. Look at that. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, look at look at Blade. Look at Blade, right? <laughs> There's Blade on the cover. <laughs> that is 
sharp looking. Dude. Yeah. Mike F. Comes out tomorrow. Or Wednesday, depending on where you get your books. But anyway, that's the direct market cover. And that's... Oh, okay. uh, cover. Mark Brooks. Mark Brooks, Marvel monograph, uh, tree paperback art of Mark Brooks. Uh, is it? Is there no hot female like photo they could have put on here that probably would have sold this book like ten ten thousand more copies if you just put I a hot know. chick on the cover? First right. Of Mark Brooks, the chicks. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go back to that. I was like, why is it Captain America? All right, anyways, because it's Captain America, man. Yeah, but he sells. But if he had boobs and was in the bikini, he'd sell so many more copies. So just put a <laughs> Black Widow up there. They did that with the In Hugh Glee cover of Marvel Lives Again, Horror Lives Again. Exactly. And that's going to sell like 10, 10 times more copies. So right. speaking of selling, go ahead and talk about this, and then I'll talk about <laughs> World of Realms. Marvel nah. Marvel verse graphic novel Venom? What is this? Is it just random Venom issues? Sort of. So... It yeah, what well, Geo Ge- Geo Geo? <laughs> Sorry, I just read that book. <laughs> Go ahead, Geo. Tell them what it's uh, about. Yeah, those are the uh, digest size books for kids. The reader, new reader friendly stories to get you caught up on the character. But What's he's weird, not that this scary one... looking in those in those in those kitty <laughs> books. Like he looks like he's gonna like he looks like a demon in on this cover. It's beautiful. The top well, of they use like, repainted one cover, but... one. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man issue, but it also puts issues of Spider-Man Adventures, which is the comics based on the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of weird, but I get it. You know, I guess if you're gonna do it to kids, they can't talk about suicide and and things no. like that because he has a dark past. All right. So War of the right. Realms, Omar. Yeah, both covers are gone. They're it's out of uh, back ordered at Diamond. So I'm trying to talk to uh, Marvel about printing more because they were gone three weeks ago. So oh, wow. So I'm it, trying to get uh, Marvel to to see what like, something is going on. And I'm trying to figure it out. So I'm I'm reaching out to different people to see where the problem lies because by the time these books come out here, it's you know how it, it's it's a big mess here tomorrow, right? Yeah. Like uh, at IST, cheap graphic novels already put their books out, and this one's gone. But tomorrow is going to be a mess. And then in Europe and in Australia, in the UK, like everywhere else, these books don't even make it. They don't exist to them, yeah. Like some, depending on some outlets, they will. Um, but it's just weird. Like, it, and it's happened, you know, since this pandemic started, but something, something's going on with the numbers. I don't know what it is, but I'm trying to figure it out. So What's people the can number? get their books. Is it- is it just what? they're not printing enough copies? I mean, obviously Maybe. they're not, but like, or is it just that popular because it's War of Realms? I know we're, I don't. Well, no, no, War it's not even War of the Realms. Realm. Remember the same thing happened with Absolute Carnage. The same thing happened. I mean, Ben Riley Omnibus is gone. Volume two is gone. That's crazy. Ben, no, we um, about let me let me say that again. Ben Riley Omnibus Volume two <laughs> is out of print. Three weeks. That's crazy. Uh but. Yeah, this is uh, this is the Arthur Adams cover. I love this cover. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is the one I would get. The under the dust jacket is so gorgeous. It's the map of the realms. It's such oh, a cool great. layout. And this is the Russell Dodderman cover. Well, I think that's co- that cover is nice too. Yeah, both of them are good. Um, and it's what's on the inside that counts. Biggest Marvel omnibus release. Over fifteen hundred and fifty pages, I think. Look at that. I'm still scrolling. There's still more stuff. <laughs> yeah. Jess made this happen. Because right. I remember when he was asking me, I said, just wait for the omnibus. He's like, there's an omnibus? And I'm like, no, but I'm sure there's one coming. Bam. Just yeah. like that. He I summoned. Bought all the trades and made it happen. You did, man. Thank you for your sacrifice. Uh, Raz, <laughs> out of print. <laughs> Not out of stock. So, um, it's, it's gone. shown. So what happens is, is it, okay. So what happens? Like, like Gabe can explain this better. So let's say he's still working at Torpedoes, and somebody comes in and wants to order War of the Realms, and they only got two copies, and two copies are gone. Gabe puts in the order through the system, right? Gabe, and it goes to Diamond. Yeah. And Diamond says, "Oh, sorry, man, it's back ordered." 
So what does that mean? They're at the mercy of the of the publisher and printer. Meaning, if Marvel has moved on, it means they're not going to print anymore. Diamond's order is is yeah. Diamond's order is out is back order, and they have to wait for Marvel, which means Marvel has to print more for them to get more. And how often does that happen? Well, I mean, it's happened with Wolverine, and and they're gonna they're gonna do more. It happened with X Men Grand Design, and they're gonna mm-hmm. do more. So I'm trying to get David to just go ahead and get um, uh, start you know making so, something needs to happen, and it's either between the pre orders that are coming in, and or the system is busted. So I don't I don't know, but I feel bad for all the people that want these books that can't get them, and I don't. You know, I mean, I guess it's good for scalpers that want to flip them on eBay, but I don't want people getting so. those prizes. Yeah. I just don't understand how this just all of a sudden happened. It just, we went, I, I understand COVID created some problems, but. Well, COVID also created the demand, right? A lot because of people are brand new and like to to this omnibus collecting. Uh, there, I mean, there's been a lot of people, a huge rise of people that just started wanting these books. New people coming into the hobby. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, even pre-orders are gone. Like people aren't filling their pre-orders. I've been hearing that on my channel. Like people uh, reaching out to me, like, "What's going on? I pre-ordered this book two months ago." And that's a, that's a whole another problem too, because we have, then we got to get into final cutoff dates and stuff like that. But but I did want to say that 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 War of the Realms is gone. And I'm going to try to get another printing or another restock. I'm sorry uh, to see you know if we can make that happen. I'm I'm working on a couple other books that I've been seeing that, that people need. But, what do you mean by so restock? So you you tell Marvel, hey, these things are gone, and Marvel has more in a warehouse. Then th- no, they make another print batch. They're like, okay, we'll put another order in because it takes a lot, you know, for David to go up to somebody and be like, Hey, these books need to be reprinted. This guy from YouTube <laughs> told me, <laughs> right. You YouTube, can't just go yeah. into a meeting with like that. You need sales charts, you need uh, pie graphs or whatever, but you know, uh, mm-hmm. so it, it takes a little research um, to, in order to make that happen. But at least, you know, it's happening for a couple of books. Yes, books do last longer on Amazon, but that's a completely different al- algorithm, right? That's what, that's the book that's Amazon orders fifteen thousand copies of stuff, and, and comic book stores and places like that al- have to go. Their algorithm of, you know, is so weird; it's automated. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Well, like, you worked at a comic book shop. How in yeah. the hell would you program anything for automated? Yeah, and that, yeah, that's and that's the thing is that they they just have an algorithm. The algorithm of a comic book store is. Uh, I sold four, so uh, and it took me like five months to sell them all. So I'll order two this time. Right, you know, you, it's, exactly. it, it's all magic eight ball guessing. You know, there is no algorithm in a comic book store. You just kind of just go off of kind of sales. So, and if you order from Amazon, like I uh, think about everybody that in this chat uh, with uh, She Hulk, you are at the mercy of the Amazon uh, shippers, depending on yeah. how your book comes into. So always keep that in mind. Winter Soldier. Right, oh, so, Winter Soldier got pushed back. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Winter Soldier is uh, oh Ed Brubaker Winter Soldier. So that'll be uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, X Men Milestones Age of X. That's kind of new to be a milestone, but cool. That's what I'm thinking, man. House of X and Powers of X is going to be the next milestone. Yeah. The only one they haven't collected is uh, Age of Apocalypse. I think that one's just too big of a collection. Uh, Dynamite this week has uh, Elvira, Mistress of Dark, trade paperback volume two. Yeah. Did she write that? No. Elvira <laughs> has comics. Jesus. I just want an excuse to interview her. <laughs> Hi. Do, do, do you, you remember you when you were in that movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Boom Studios this week. Uh, man, they're really pumping out the uh, Buffy stuff. It seems to be like Buffy, like every every week is Buffy, Buffy, Buffy. Uh, Buffy Vampire Slayer trade paperback volume four, Lumberjanes original graphic novel volume three colors, or two cool. colors. Sorry, that may, I think that is, if I'm not mistaken, not collected in the hardcovers. 
Oh, to the Mac archivers. Yeah. I yeah, if you could click on that because it actually, uh, I actually read this book. Uh, third and final graphic novel from the Eisner Award winning of Lumber Janes. Uh, I wonder if it's okay. I don't. I, I don't know now. I know there's two other books that came out in this at this price point that um, were not collected in the hardcovers. So I'm wondering if this is the third one. So Jess, I have the first hardcover of this, and I've had it forever, and I've never. I don't think I've ever opened it. Honestly. <laughs> Should I should I be reading this? Uh, I did a video on all six Lumberjanes hardcovers. It is super fun. I think yeah. if you like, you're you're the one that uh, told me about Gotham Academy. There's right. a Lumberjanes Gotham Gotham Academy crossover. If you yeah. like Gotham Academy, you will like Lumberjanes. Okay, because I've read that I have that crossover, and it just I, I didn't really get much of a feel for the Lumberjane cast. Right, I just keep seeing it everywhere, and then I know it just recently got picked up for like a, a movie or, or a TV show or, or something like that came came across. It. Yeah, so, I think animated really show. Like, I think, yeah, I really like it a lot. I think you would too. Cool. Yeah, if it's if it's yeah, because like I said, they they had that Gotham Academy issue, and I just didn't get a feel for them. But well, yeah, you, you can read a few issues of Lumberjanes to to get a feel for the characters. All right, and then uh, here's kind of all the extra fun stuff. Animorphs. Wow, that takes me back. <laughs> Damn. Who asked for that back? How, how bad wow. is that Photoshop? Did they try to link those damn things to Transformers? Uh, no. Was that something else? No, that was something else. These just They just turned Beautiful. into animals. Dude, and talk about a company that don't give up. Tokyo Pop printing yeah. shit. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Dude, somebody forgot to tell them they went bankrupt a decade ago. <laughs> That's on demand, isn't it? Print on demand, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They extended way too... Nah, never mind. Oh, Ooh, Babysitter's Club. <laughs> <laughs> Some more manga. I am going to be talking about all that stuff uh, at the end of the month. If anybody's wondering. Which, oh, the manga. Oh, you the can manga. Say that out. Word. You can say that word, man. Okay. Wait a minute now. <laughs> what is what is dead What's going dudes on over about? Here? What is dead dudes about? Dead dudes. I don't see dead yeah. Dudes. By Oni. What's going on there? If I have to tell you, Jeff. I can't. Then the education yeah. system has failed you. All right, keep scrolling down. I bet Dead Dudes is good if it's from Oni. They they put out good stuff. Yeah, I was being facetious. I I was being serious. Oh okay. <laughs> hey, fangirl manga. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to get the fangirls on that. Get a Robo, Golden Kamui, lots of cool stuff. I'm a big fan of Get a Robo. I love that shit. His favorite? What? I feel like there's a word missing. Ooh, Dark Crystal. Which one's this? From Boom Entertainment. And a hardcover, too. Yeah. I've got a couple of those hardcovers. They're nice. Witches. Oni Press. Have you read that one, Jess? Little Witches? Uh, no. Have you? Mm -mm. Mm. You said you liked Oni Press. So. I, I like some of their stuff, yeah. Fanographics has an ebook. Oh, Anime. shit. Wait, wait, wait. Is that the new uh, Meta Barons? Yeah, what's the story on that? I think this is the complete collection of the new. Run yeah, it is the second, second cycle. cycle. That's what's up. I didn't know this was coming out. So this is, is something we have already, right? No, <laughs> this is if you have the original, like if you have the the big series, like the big limited edition book or the ultimate edition. Yeah, this, yeah. this is the follow up to that. Okay, mm. is it a big ass book or is it just a smaller one? 
I think it's going to be the size of the Ultimate Edition, so it's like a little taller than the standard size hardcovers. But uh, uh, man, it's 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 all of them together. You have Jenny. I think Jenny Frizen worked on this. Ooh. I want to say some Travis Cheris worked on this. So I have that first one, so that means I need this one. So I'm in. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, uh, Nico. That's look at the name, Nico. Um, Hen- Henrykin, the guy that did Pride of Baghdad. He did um, issues of New X Men with Brian the Return of Magic. Mm. Mm, that's the writer. Oh, he did. He did that <laughs> book, all right. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. I didn't know it had a sequel. That's cool. I'm glad we scroll through this every week. We always find something cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's a lot of manga coming out. Oh, Pokemon! Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Geo, my man. Alejandro Jorwaski. Seven Lives. Ah, it looks Mer- interesting. In the book. Yep. Who did the Not Dune movie, sadly. <laughs> and... Seems like it's going on forever. Oh, yeah. We're getting a short collection book from Urusawa that I do recommend. It's called Sneeze, if anybody wants to check that out. Cool. Yeah, it's all his a bunch of his short <laughs> stories in oversized manga format. You had me at Urusawa. Yep. Ultraman. Nice. I didn't even God damn, volume 14? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Dude, I'm just, I'm just Ultraman, so Geo? What? Is what it was good? That? Have you been reading those Ultraman? No, I haven't. I haven't. Sorry. I haven't been reading it. Oh. But I hear it's good. If you like Ultraman, you're you're gonna have a fun time with it. Huh. All right, so that's that's Diamond. Now I forgot we got the second site to visit for the DC stuff this week. <laughs> DC. Oof. Uh, Dollhouse uh, Family hardcover from the, that the uh, that's the Black no. Label Joe Hill. Good. I want to try that. Probably has, probably has that acetate cover. Probably, probably vellum. Vellum. <laughs> Might have I'm, uh, I'm learning new words today. Moonlight. Uh, Doomsday <laughs> Clock, the complete collection trade paperback. <laughs> Man, they are just slowly milking this every format one at a time. One at a time, yep. Man. And, and uh, it, it, it means RES is uh, it's a resolicit. Whenever you see RES in parentheses on a book, it's a uh, resolicit. Canceled. Yeah. So what it means at one time it was canceled and moved over. What, uh, sorry to uh, interrupt. What is that Swamp Thing book about? Is that like a graphic? Um, it looks like a like, kids or the young adult or DC yeah. Inc. Maybe. Okay. Something Jess will be telling us about one day mm. when he reads it. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds pretty interesting. 200 pages. No, it, it's emo Swamp Thing with his emo haircut. Uh, Twins Alec and Walker Holland. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> and that's that for uh for this week's releases. I got the results for the poll. What's oh, the, what, what was the question? I asked what book are you most excited for this week? And I just picked four random books. Um oh, okay. did anybody made, say that that one chick? No. That was Put her legs. Destiny lovers, no, not that. I love that you knew what the fuck I was talking <laughs> about. You, you pervert. <laughs> oh, did you mean Destiny's lovers? Yeah. All right. What do you got? All right. So this is real time. Uh, as the people in the chat voted, we got forty votes in, and of course, forty-eight percent of that uh, of those votes picked out War of the Realms Omnibus. Twenty-five uh, percent went with TMNT. Then the absolute swamp thing reprint, and then Bitter Root Volume Two got two votes. That is cool technology that you had that tonight. Nice, yeah. done. very nice, very nice. So thank you everybody for participating in that poll. If you like that, we're going to be doing that more often with the releases to see what people are into. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. All right, gentlemen, I got to jump off here, but. Always a pleasure. I on. My laptop is out of uh, ink. 
Oh, we're dying. Out of ink. In out, of, out of ink. Digital um, juice. Yeah. So I'm out of here. You gentlemen, take it easy. Take what, care. What, what's on tomorrow night? Old reader, new reader? Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. That's at 8 o'clock p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern <laughs> Standard Time. And we're talking about Gyo. Ooh, Those nice. Nasty Junji Ito fish. So you all take care, gentlemen. Be good. Take care. Take care, man. Did we cover this in man question? Uh, I just saw it. Guys, other than uh, Peter David Hulk Omnis that Marvel has seemed to fast track, what other Omnis for a series do you wish came out that fast? Wouldn't it be three Omnis in 16 months for Hulk? Crazy. That is mm, crazy. Oh, that okay. they, they just shotgunned that Omnibus series out. Uh, my answer is Silver Age, Superman, and Batman. I would love to see just seven of those out in the next two years. So I can get to the Bronze Age before I drop dead. Er Ernie, uh, y'all got any suggestions for Halloween watches? <clears throat> I have a swatch watch that's a Halloween watch. It's awesome. It lights up. Find a, um find, a, find a pocket watch the shape of a <clears throat> pumpkin. If you want to read Halloween books, uh, we had a show last Thursday about horror books. So, yeah, Ice Cream Man, good horror book. There you go. Yep. Very good horror book, and same with the vellum covered basket full of heads. That's a nice that's a cover. Real vellum. It's like a facsimile. Chad Omni Dog, have you, any of you read Outcast by Kirkman? If so, what are your thoughts? Should I check it out? Lou and I hated it. <laughs> I was oh. waiting for that. <laughs> really? Dude, yeah. uh, Kirkman is just just whiffing it with Jess. It didn't I, it was nothing you hadn't already seen before. It was I didn't like it either. Yeah, I read some of it. It was just okay. Yeah, I didn't see a reason to uh keep reading it or own it. They even made a TV show out of it, but it didn't last too long. Just one season. Hmm. And it was pretty bland, too. <laughs> it was just an okay middle-of-the-road uh, book. What's that post-apocalyptic book he's got out? Uh, Oblivion something? Oblivion Song. Have yeah. you read that? I haven't read that. I haven't read it. I was running because Jess is just striking out. <laughs> or, uh, or Kirkman books. Well, I, I starting book two tomorrow on Invincible, and I want to get a couple under my belt this week. Yeah, I Invincible is the best thing he's done. Invincible is like, oh yeah, like Walking Dead is. You know, he made his money with Walking Dead, but he did legit like artwork with Invincible. Oh yeah, I agree. It's the best work he's done. By the way, Gabe, you were talking about the monograph, uh, Mark Brooks, uh, collected edition thing. Yeah. I think they should have done this cover, which I know Jess will like. Uh, this one. That would have been oh, my dude. choice for the yeah. cover. <laughs> that would sell 20,000 more copies. That is yeah. nice. Yeah. I don't want to see Captain America. Give me a, a kick-ass female character. Yeah. That is a really good one. And my laptop's about to die. So let me talk real quickly about InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add an extra 2% to that. Um, every month, at the end of the month, they are kind enough to give us a $50 gift card to give away to a lucky viewer like you. Anywhere in the world, you are uh, able to enter the contest and win a $50 gift card in stocktrades.com. Uh, let's see if you spend $50 or more in an order in the United States, you get free shipping, fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Yeah. So, uh, Thank you. I'm on Omnidogs Vault on YouTube and Omnidogs underscore Vault on Instagram. And I must peace out. Peace and love. Peace and love. Good to see you both. And thank you to the chat. Bye, Jess. Right. Bye bye.
Take care. Uh, well, since we're on that train, you can find me on A Week in Geekdom, where I talk about anime, comics, and manga. I just put out a video on a manga that I just read. And this upcoming Friday, I will do another Fables uh, live stream talking about the uh, Volume 8 hardcover. So if you can check that out, that's right there. A Week in Geekdom. <clears throat> yes, sir. And you guys can spot me, find me at uh, Instagram, Gabe Loves 90s Comics. And you'll find me here on Omnibros Sundays and Mondays. So yeah, I think that's it, Gio. Let's go ahead and cut out of here. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for the likes. Bye.